Hi Jade, so I decided to record a video for you on molecular orbital theory of benzene. So last time when we spoke, we, we talked about bond order. And the equation for bond order is number of electrons in the bonding orbital minus number of electrons in anti-bonding orbital divided by two. So if you look at the molecule of benzene, it has six sigma bonds and six pi bonds, and three pi bonds, excuse me. So for the sigma bond, it's pretty easy. This is, um, for each bonding orbital, you have one anti-bonding orbital. So this is sigma bonding orbital, this is sigma star. And for each single bond, we can draw the following diagram where two electrons go into the bonding orbital and no electrons are located in anti-bonding orbital. So for each sigma bond, we have bond order of 2 minus 0 divided by 2 is equal to 1, okay? So that's pretty easy. Now let's look at your uh, pi orbitals, where the situation is a little bit more complicated. Okay, so now let me draw your pi orbitals. So as you remember, the molecule of benzene, all the carbons are sp2 hybridized. That means that one of the p orbitals on each carbon is not hybridized and can overlap to create the pi bond. So the lowest bonding orbital for pi bonds is where all of the p orbitals are in phase. Let me show you what that means. Let me just draw them first. So each phase has a plus sign and a minus sign. I'm just going to color code them for, for convenience. So one of them is going to be uh, black and the bottom one will be white. So now the lowest bonding orbital where all of these overlap, right? You get a continuous p orbital overlap. All six are in phase, right? So um, I will number the carbons accordingly. One, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? Now we can envision a situation where three of the carbons are in phase with each other, but out of phase with the remaining three. So the way to look at it is basically, let's flip carbons one, two, and three. Then we will have a situation where carbon one, two, and three are in phase with each other. The black phase is now pointing to the bottom, right? But then carbons four, five, and six are in phase with each other, but not with carbons one, two, and three. If we stick to our numbering scheme, then this is what it is. All we did is we flipped carbons one, two, and three. And we can do the opposite. We can also keep one, two, and three like they were at the bottom structure and flip carbons four, five, and six. So carbons one, two, and three, again, are in phase with each other, but out of phase with four, five, and six. And four, five, and six are in phase with each other, but out of phase with one, two, and three. So let's stick with the nomenclature, one, two, three, four, five, and six. You still get orbital overlap, but it's not as continuous as at the bottom structure, right? Only three of them are overlapping like that. So these are also bonding orbitals, but they're higher in energy than the first that we looked at. Now, for each bonding orbital, there are anti-bonding orbitals. So now let's imagine that only two carbons are in phase with each other. So we're going to have now uh, the following situation, where in this picture, we're going to have carbons two and three, be in phase, okay, and carbons 5 and 6 would be in phase, okay, so and carbons 1 and 4 would be out of phase. So now, um, let me make sure it's right, yes, so now we have the overlap only between these two carbons. So now you don't get this continuous overlap of three carbons. So this is your anti-bonding orbital. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then the opposite of that situation is where now carbons one and four, the black phase is pointing up, 
and the other ones that it's pointing down. So it's the same in terms of energy. You again have only two carbons at a time overlapping, right? So now it's like that, right? And so this is your another anti-bonding orbital. Three, four, five, and six. And then the highest in energy anti-bonding orbital where no one overlaps, where they alternate and then you get no overlap at all. Okay, so then they like that, right? And then like this, and then again like that, and then again like this. Okay, that was a bit far, but that's okay. Like that, and then this one is like that. Okay, so that's, so three bonding orbitals, three anti-bonding orbitals. So now let's look how this affects the overall bond order. So now let's calculate the bond order for your pi bonds. So just to remind you, the sigma bond had a bond order of equal to 1. Okay, so now let's look at pi bond. So we, uh, let me draw the diagram first. So we have three bonding orbitals, right? This is pi. And then three anti-bonding orbitals. These are called pi star, okay? And we have six electrons, six pi electrons. So then all the six pi electrons are located in the bonding orbital, right? And none are an anti-bonding. So the bond order is going to be the following. The bond order is going to be 6 minus 0 divided by 2. So this gives us 3. So now what happens is we have a bond order of 4, sigma bond plus pi bond, total bond order, bond order, total, is equal to 3 plus 1, which is equal to 4. Okay? And we have 6 carbons. See if I, for, so per carbon, let me do this on a new page. So now, per carbon, we have 6 carbons divided by the bond order of 4, and we get 1.5. What does that mean? That means that all the bonds in benzene are equal in length, right? And they are slightly longer than a double bond, but slightly shorter than a single bond, right? Because if they would be, if they would alternate, then it would be two or one, right? But they don't. And we know this from resonance, right? This is consistent with resonance theory because these electrons are constantly circulating around the ring, right? They're delocalized. You can push them around. And so that's why the bonds are of the same length and the bond order is 1.5. I hope this helps and I will see you in two weeks.